that we're just getting ready to leave Montague. Um, we're heading to Couch and Bay today. Gonna hang out at a dock for a few days and then, I don't know, we'll see where we go from there. We decided we were done with the normal life and set out to turn our lives into an adventure. This is our story. The good, the bad, and the crazy. Join us as we sail, explore, and share our mistakes along the way. Welcome to the Wayward Life. Where you going all the way to? The water was dead calm as we left our mooring and headed out towards Couch and Bay. Beautiful day. The wind's picking up though, so we missed all of our sailing wind and now it's here. What do you do? So here we are in Couchin Bay. We are at the Fisherman's Wharf and we are going to try to do our chain locker while we're here because they let you do work at this wharf, which is great. Because it's the Fisherman's Wharf and it yep. turns out fishermen need to do work on their boats. The guy next to us is grinding and fiberglassing his deck, which we we'll never know the joys of again. No, how disappointing. I hope. We're very sad about it, clearly. But we will know the joys of trying to chip paint out of a steel chain locker, which is what we are going to be doing tomorrow. That is a needle gun for, I don't know, we've always used them for welding, for chiseling slag and stuff, oh, cleaning, yeah. cleaning welds. Um, so this unscrews. This goes on, and then you make a whole bunch of noise, and it's pretty much miserable until you're done. It takes paint off. <laughs> so that takes the paint off, just in case you didn't figure that out. And rust. And, and the rust. Most importantly, we are taking off all of the rust flakes, and anything that can come off will come off, and then we can use rust converter and then two-part coal tar epoxy which i don't really not super excited about the coal tar epoxy but i know that it is a tried tested and true method and it's going to be good for you know maybe five to six years and then we'll have to do it all over again. Yay. <laughs> we are going to be so good at chain lockers by the time we actually sail anywhere. It's going to be amazing. Yep. Yep. So that's our plan. So we're just going to pull the chain out right now onto the dock and get it all ready to go tomorrow so we can start on the annoying noisy work tomorrow. There's a swan out there. Here you can see me skillfully standing on the down button while Logan neatly fed the chain out onto the dock. the chain and all the road out on the dock so that's easy now I guess to get everything else out of the chain locker there's a bunch of mats and stuff in there so that'll come out tomorrow
So today we're chiseling out the chain locker, or starting. It's gonna be really noisy. <laughs> Super fun. So do you wanna explain why? Oh, uh, cause we got some rust starting and the old coating is compromised and it's just old. It's time to get recoated, so we have to remove that, remove any of the rust, treat it, and recoat it. So what's it coated in right now? Bed liner, I believe. Feels like truck bed liner. Um, and it looks like it's held up fairly well, but uh, I bought some coal tar epoxy. So that's what we're gonna use, what the tugboats use. And we're using a product called Blue Seal, I believe. And I've never used this specific product before, but it looks like it's probably gonna be the best one that we can get for the short time that we have, because we have to be out of here as soon as we can. Less than a week. Yeah. So, let's get to work. So just to reiterate, we are chiseling out the bed liner that's currently in here. Then we're applying a rust converter and then an epoxy. And hopefully that holds up well enough for a few years anyway to keep the water off of the steel so that it doesn't rust. Because obviously when it rusts you get holes. And this is a pretty important part of the boat because it's the very front which takes a lot of pressure from waves and is constantly getting wet both because of the anchor and because obviously it's the bow of the boat and that's where the waves hit first. So that's what we're doing. Things don't look too bad in there, but as you will soon see, a coating can hide a lot of damage. So this is how it's coming off so far. So that's not too bad. You should be able to do most of this by hand. And then uh, this bit here is the rusty bit. And you can see the needle gun cleans it up. Good enough to hit it with the rust converter. And then, uh, then that should all be good. But things did not continue to go so smoothly. While Logan was working on the chain locker, I worked on chipping away some of the rust on the tow rail to try and fix those rusty spots. These spots unfortunately led us to finding some holes through the tow rail. Find any more holes? Not really. Oh, there's a couple that I just missed right here, I think. It's hard to tell. Where? Oh uh, yeah. I'm go back to those. I couldn't see them because of the like the sun, right? Yeah, I know it's hard to tell. We also discovered that in some spots, the rust had gone all the way through the chain locker plates. But we were stuck dealing with it, so we kept working. 
After chipping, I ground the spots to get a flush surface around the rust areas so epoxy can be easily applied. I also applied blue steel directly after, which you will see later was not the ideal way to go about this. Blue steel goes on as a milky bluish color and turns black when drying. So it's the end of day two working on the chain locker. So <laughs> poor Logan's been stuck in the chain locker for two days, chiseling away at the rust that's in there, which is apparently a lot, much more than we expected. So we also actually have a few holes that have gone through the chain locker and we found a bunch of thin metal. So what we're going to do is we're going to patch it with epoxy, the holes. We're going to use the boat for the summer and then in the fall we're going to haul out and we're going to repair our chain locker, which is going to involve cutting out plates, <laughs> welding new plates in, and beefing up the whole thing I think. So. We've got some stuff in here, but I'll see if I can show you what we got going on. Yeah. So you can see here, cross members are rotted away. Some so, are less than fantastic. Yeah, and down here, you can kind of see two holes popping through. There's definitely only supposed to be one there. And then there's one underneath this yeah. piece of angle you can see. So we've got that going on which we obviously were not expecting, or we probably wouldn't have started doing this here. We probably would have just dealt with the chain locker for the summer and then hauled out to do it. But we will do our best to make it work and cruise for the summer. And then in the fall, we will deal with it properly, cut those plates out, replace them. Same with the cross members. <clears throat> and the other job that we were, knew we were gonna have to tackle at some point Oh, we knew this was, we were going to have to tackle this. Yeah. And we were planning to beef up the front of the hull anyways, um, for going north. Um, so as we were saying before the camera battery died, so unceremoniously without giving us warning, our plan is to fix the holes that you can see in the chain locker well enough so that we can cruise and then we're going to cruise for the summer. We're gonna enjoy it. Then comes fall and winter time when it's actually almost nice to weld, then we're gonna haul out and we're gonna actually fix it. We're gonna cut some plates out where the steel's thin. We're gonna replace them in the cross members. And we're going to kind of enjoy welding. Well, we will enjoy welding. Cause it's a lot nicer to weld in the fall and in the winter time than it is in the summertime because welding is really hot and you don't depend on temperature for welding. You just kind of depend on temperature for your own comfort. So as long as it's above like minus 80, <laughs> we should be able to weld, which it will be. And um, so that's our plan. We are going to weld in the winter time and fix the chain locker and then hopefully be ready for next summer to continue cruising. Man, am I bruised and battered. I need to get a better, like a camping mat or something, an old shitty piece of foam. I need a shower. Yeah, you do. So a fisherman that we know named Tyler gave us prawns and crab freshly caught. So that's what we're going to eat for dinner. We suffer through all of these projects for some awesome moments like this one. Fresh seafood that is healthy, nourishing, and caught sustainably. We peeled the prawns and boiled the crab for 10 minutes. Here we have crab, 
prawns with asparagus, carrots, and mashed potatoes with a ton of garlic butter on top of the asparagus and the prawns. What do you think? I'm hungry. I really want to eat this. Take it into it. <laughs> We didn't have crab leg cracky thingies, so instead we had to use our fingers and teeth to get into the crab. The teeth part is particularly not recommended, but it did the job this time. So this morning, I didn't really get an early start on today because I am really beat from the last couple of days of chiseling the anchor locker out. I don't even remember how many days it's been. Two or three. Three. It's been three days. Uh, pretty, pretty beat up. <laughs> Feeling a little stiff. This morning, we we're gonna make some potato and crab cakes with the leftover crab we got from Tyler yesterday. So, um, I've already started mixing them up. And that's what I've got so far. And I'm just basically loosely going off of a recipe I found online and adding a few things because I don't have everything on that recipe. This should be <coughs> the last uh, last day um, chipping on the anchor locker before we can coat it with the rust converter and then we have to wait eight hours and then we can start um, filling in our holes temporarily. <laughs> we'll do a good um, structural epoxy repair on the holes that should last us through the year and then we will haul out and fix it properly. Um, but I'm hoping to get that done today if it doesn't rain. It's gorgeous out right now, but uh, they are calling for rain through tonight and tomorrow. But if I can get this repair done, then um, if we have to move the boat, we can at least move the boat. But uh, yeah, a couple more days of... Uh, Fairing and sanding and painting and we should be all back together again. Anyways, let's make some crab, crab cakes. Next week we will show you the process of putting things back together. But till then, enjoy these crab cakes. Thanks so much for watching and for helping us out by liking, subscribing and commenting. And a special shout out to our patrons for giving us that extra boost.